going to talk about the virus this morning. I think it's a good time to think about how we think about the virus, how we feel about it. I remember when the virus first came to the shores of Australia and we went into lockdown and uh, there was an element of novelty about it and I suspect many of us thought that this, this was just a temporary thing that once we finished this initial period of the lockdown it'd be over and we'd resume normal life. But it's becoming very apparent not only in Australia but around the world that the normal is not going to return. In fact there's a phrase now of the new normal. But I want to take that a step further because I think there's some really important things in this period we need we need to name and to deal with. In particular I think that there's some important grief work that we have to do not only personally but also as a community because there have been some really important losses. So I'm not talking about having a whinge here. I'm not talking about complaining. Usually when we whinge or complain it's because we haven't fully expressed the grief and if we don't express the grief we can't move on. So in order to reflect in hopefully a new way or a significant way about this time of the virus, I want to introduce the metaphor of the wilderness. The metaphor of the wilderness comes to us from the Hebrew scriptures in the books of Exodus and Numbers. Now let's be clear, the wilderness in the Hebrew scriptures is not an historical account. If I can borrow a term from our indigenous peoples, the, the, the story and the metaphor of the wilderness is part of the, our dreamtime stories. It's a way of making sense of things, of discovering community and the sacred in difficult circumstances. So just to, to recapitulate in the story, in this dreamtime story, Moses leads the Hebrew slaves from Egypt and you know initially it's all very exciting but things get tough and then the rabble as they're sometimes described begin to murmur. Murmur is the word that is used a number of times and the Hebrew word has the connotation of, of complaint. So after the exhilaration of the initial liberation they begin to complain. It is a difficult time, a painful time. At times there's infighting, there's mistrust. There are people that undermine and even betray community. There's disillusionment with leadership. The leadership has let them down. The leadership is wandering astray. But curiously, in the wilderness, there are also periods, unexpected periods periods of grace. The manna and the quail, the water bursting from the rock, bitter water being turned into sweet water. So it's a remarkable uh, collection of images, this, this wonderful dream time story of the wilderness and it sits well with our present experience. At the moment Many of us are experiencing something of the wilderness. What we thought was temporary is permanent. And whilst in some ways uh, critical elements of the virus, we hope in a year or three, will change, we suspect that we're never going back to what it was a few years ago. And so it's at that point I want us to think <coughs> deeply about the significance of the virus. Using the metaphor of the wilderness as a, as a filter or a prism to gain new insights into the experience. When I mean analysing the virus deeply, I'm not talking about an exercise in pessimism. I'm not talking about, the, you know, a woe is me, but realistic thinking about what is taking place. Bearing in mind that for some people, 
it is dreadful. I mean, in 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 countries and communities that are suffering uh, poverty, it is diabolical. Uh, for many of us in uh, privileged societies, it's still uh, very difficult. And I want to take up this uh, this sort of notion of waxing and waning. I think many Australians have been waxing and waning uh, with the virus. You know, thinking it's going to be all fixed up in in the in the tw- twinkling of an eye. It's, that's not going to happen. And what I want us to now to do is to take our whinging seriously. In recent weeks, all sorts of people have been complaining and whinging, just like the murmuring of the Hebrew slaves in the desert. And rather than dismiss the complaining or to dismiss the whinging, I want us to take it a step further. And I'm going to suggest that the whinging and complaining is the tip of the iceberg. It's the beginning of a deep and important grief process that we need to undertake. The Australia, the life that we knew of even six months ago is over. And it's cause for great sadness. And in many ways we need to find ways to honour the grief, uh, to honour those losses, perhaps as a faith community gathered together and to name and honour the loss. But even at a personal level, to reflect upon the significance of a loss, to share it with friends, to write it in a journal. Whatever we need to do, we need to acknowledge that something, something significant has been lost. And like all grief work, we won't deal with it in one day or in one moment. The grief work becomes the kind of work that we have to honour over the, over the coming months. In that process, though, there, there are opportunities, I think, serious opportunities for moments of grace. Remember the Hebrew slaves in the wilderness, the rabble murmuring and complaining. And unexpectedly, there were these powerful moments of grace. Unexpectedly, there were moments of connection and moments of a community. The French philosopher Simone Weil had a lovely term that we can use in relationship to this, and she talked about uh, uh, attending. It was about being very present to the reality in which we fi- found ourselves, being attentive to the smallest detail. She believed, and I, I think rightly so, that the divine or the sacred is found in the real. It's found by focusing on the moment training ourselves, not all the time, but on a, on a regular basis, to creating spaces or times in our life where we focus attentively to what is taking place in our life and around us, to the feelings that we're having, listening deeply to what lies behind our own whinging or complaining or lament honouring the grief, being open. It also has a relational dimension. It's about being attentive to others, listening to them, giving others some space, attending to their struggles, not solving them, but being present for others. These are really uh, difficult times. And I think it's time we reframe the whole concept of the virus. It's not going to go away overnight. It's, it, it is the new normal and it's not easy. And what I'm suggesting today is that the metaphor of the wilderness, this extraordinary dream time story with good and bad, difficult days, days of community, ambiguity, all sorts of uh, complexities, is a very relevant uh, metaphor to where we find ourselves. So there are going to be tough days. There are going to be days where we're at each other, where there's a breakdown in community. But on this journey, this journey that we're making together, there will be 
moments of grace. And in a sense, all it asks for us from us is a certain attentiveness, uh, some, some realistic thinking about what is taking place in the world and in our lives, listening to the heartbeats of the day, creating open spaces where we can sense what is taking place, creating spaces for others, attending gently and with kindness to the struggles of others. And in these quiet moments, in these open spaces, the experience of grace, unexpected, gentle, but life restoring, will bubble up, touch us and renew us for the day and the days ahead. In the name of God, Creator, Redeemer and Sustainer, Amen.